Right, this is an update video and before I overthink how I'm going to begin it, I'm just going to begin it. You know what I mean? I have been thinking about making a video for a few days, longer, and I had a couple of really good like, oh yeah, that sentence that would really set up what I want to say. And, um, but you know, then I forget what it was. Um, so, I just, basically what I want to do is, as I've done before, is just get what I want to say off my chest. And um, just to put it out there, I'm really pleased with, um, with my outlook and the way things are turning out. Um, I think what's pleasing me the most is the discovery of the 2019 year mood wave that we've all been living through while we're on earth. Okay. Right. Particularly because, you know, we've still got another five years of going up and it just sort of explains, you know, I was thinking earlier, um, you know, like YouTube, social media, main thing I look at is YouTube, so I just say YouTube. And, you know, people make videos about their fears and, you know, in 2013 I made a video this is it, head for the hills, shared it on Facebook and that was at a time when, you know, people hadn't already discarded me as a nutter, um, you know, and because I was just sharing what I felt, that feels to me like is the fucking end of the world. and. You know, it was that, that going down. So we'd been going down since 2009 as a world. You know, this was different. This was, ooh. Okay, maybe, you know, I had one, we had one 19 years before, but then I was a teenager and stuff like that. So, you know, you haven't got anything to compare it with at that stage. You just think this is life. Um, yeah. So, you know, where we are now, we are coming out of the gloomy woods. If this was uh, one of the walks described in Lord of the Rings, <laughs> we've come out of the gloomy woods. We're gonna, it's gonna be cool for a bit. We're gonna go and see the elves or something. <laughs> then we've got, and then we've got Mordor come in 2028 so you know I do see that this is this is very likely but the other thing that's disturbed me and this is the thing about truth uncovering truth and I have been a bit disturbed so it's all to do with this the reorder of revelations and I set about to do that and it just has uncovered things for me and the world whether the world accepts it or not but it seems to be true anyway it's uncovered all this stuff about the patterns and what we're facing and where where we are in this end times scenario Ah, oh, that was it. One of the... Because I wanted to sort of... I want to do, you know, proper video and go, you know, maybe go through Revelations one chapter by one, you know. But... It's not really me, is it? So if we start off, let's frame it. What happened? Where were we in the beginning of this latest phase of God's plan? let's call it the end times from the first trumpet 
And I'm saying that first trumpet was 1349. It was the, the the first, the major black death that killed like 200 million people or something uh, worldwide. And, uh, you know, it was about a third of um, the population of Europe or something, but even, maybe even possibly more, I'm not sure. So, you know, boom, big, big thing, cannot be ignored. Now, so... <clears throat> What the tra so where had we just been before that? What was the transition from from that? How do we know that th this is the new beginning? What 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 was happening then? And it's the printed printed press. The word made flesh. So yeah, people have been speaking stuff before, people have been writing it on scrolls and then you could pass it around and read it, right? But now you were putting it into blocks. The words were going into blocks that could be printed again and again. It's like the word becomes flesh, isn't it? I just thought of that earlier. So this is the this is the like the new age and what that how that changes things for people is like suddenly you've got You've got a pamphlet or something with printed words and everybody's reading it and they're all reading exactly the same thing because it's been printed. And this, in a sense, makes it more real. You know, it, it has a much bigger effect. And um, so I think what's changed is before, there was more room for magic. Because you didn't have things printed. You just had either scrolls, which were kept with the priests, say, maybe most people didn't bother with them, and the other stuff was just words, you know, and people would say things, tell you a story, and it would have an effect. And I think the world was much more magical. I also thought before, before people knew that you could sail around the world, I mean, they used to call the world the world that they knew, but... They only knew that, and maybe they imagined a cliff off the earth, but perhaps that was just a joke. They just didn't know. So they also didn't know that it, it, you know, how big it was. It could have been much, 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 much bigger, you know? More undiscovered lands than, than we have got. Anyway, so until Francis Drake sailed around the world, um, in about under three years or something, he managed I think he'd probably do it less, but, you know, suddenly you've got, oh, right, it takes you three years to sail around the world, and that's it, that's, that's as big as it is then. So before that, you know, there's all these, there's more unknowns, and so I think, just think the world would have been a potentially a more magical place. So it's like, this is, you know, you could call this the modern age. Well, you might as well, because that's what the word means, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah? I just did tell you I was making a video. And now you've talked on it again. Yeah, and I now I am. So you've called me in the middle of it. And now I'm going to have a video with me having a hissy fit bitch in the middle of my video. What? Now I'm going to have this in my video, isn't it? Me being a hissy bitch. You won't be a hissy bitch then. Well, I'm already a hissy bitch because you've already well, interrupted me. A hissy bitch. Don't go. Just get yourself a drink for crying out loud. And I'm hot. What? I'm hot now. Oh, fucking hell, that was my fault. Well, anger makes me I'm hot. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's hot, Dad. Well, I can't be fucked with these videos anyway. <laughs> no, <fuck laughs> no one fucking watches them. <laughs> Why the fuck do you do them then? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sits there for ages making one of those videos. Can't be fucked for these videos. I know, and then I watch it all. 
wait about four hours for it. Oh! Of course I watch. You literally sit there for like two hours and you waffle. How can you watch through all of that? Well, I need to know what I've said. No, it does help. And then I know what I've said, and I think I, I've said that. Because otherwise, I'm sitting there and thinking, now I think this, I need to say that on a video. Like Kanye West, I was going to mention him as well. Oh, he's a wanker. Well, he's a pussy, isn't he? I was going to mention what you said about him as well. What did well, you say about him again? What I would say, you know, he's saying all these things about God and everything, and he is doing things, but... You know, let's see, judge people by their fruits. And, um, you know, so he's saying he's changed. Well, let's see if he hasn't given all his money away. Psych, white bike. <laughs> yeah, in his latest song. And I don't, and some of the things he said, like he says he's the greatest artist that's in existence what do you or mean something. he's fucking wank? All right. What? Do you have to swear that much? He's is that every freaking bad. Most bro. of the words that come out of your mouth He's are actually so swear freaking words. Freaking bad. Freaking hell. Frick. Freaking yeah, but if you haven't got anything to say, then don't say anything. Freaking hell. That's basically you've got nothing to say. Shush the frick up. You freaking frickhead. Alright, shh. You idiot. Shut up! <laughs> Freak off! Frick off! Frick you! Yeah. Mm. Must remember my own advice. Freaking. About love and all. You've got nothing to say, don't you? Fuck off! I didn't say that, did I? I said shut up! Frick off! No, because I do suspect that to be someone like Kanye West that they would put forward to be the, the false messiah. And because I think things again, we've been through this period. I do feel like some events have been designed to make it seem like the vision of revelations is being fulfilled, but too early, so that they'll then have they'll fake like the rider on a horse way too early before it's actually coming. What are you cutting up? Oh, you just for fun. Yeah. The green shit. The stuff I had cut off. Yeah. Um, like, so how come Kanye West is now a billionaire or something? His sister is a billionaire and was a billionaire before him. Oh, swear down, he shags his sister. And his girlfriend is a billionaire. Yeah, can't, yeah, she was a, she was a millionaire before. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, but how come, right? You know, there aren't that many billionaires in the world. There and, are. No, there aren't. Just look at LA, basically. Like no, LA, Hollywood. Yeah, but all right, billionaires are pretty much the top one percent. Okay, one percent is still seven billion people in the world. Oh, what, you're about the people okay, one percent then is still seventy million people. And I'm sure there aren't 70 million people in the world who are billionaires. Are you... Are you getting... Are you alright? What? One percent of the world is 70 million people. Oh, I thought you were saying that's like the whole world. No. One percent of the world. But anyway... Come on, that's 70 million... That's one percent? Yeah. Fucking hell. So, the reality is that they're a lot less than 1% who are billionaires, but the top 1% of the world probably have, well they have far more than 50% of the wealth and you know, you so you've got these very few people who are billionaires how is it, you know, him and his sister are both billionaires surely there's what must be some family connection, some well, yeah obviously, they're brother and sister but, well, yeah, I know there's a... But how come they're both so rich? Well, maybe Kanye was rich before and helped... Well, that's out. what I'm saying. They must have been... They must have started out pretty well. Well, yeah, obviously. I well, mean, maybe... No billionaires start from the bottom. Well, no, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So... Do you know what I mean? 
Right. So the Rothschilds. All that trading shit started from the bottom. No, you fucking didn't. The Rothschilds married into the blacks. What? The Rothschilds. Who the fuck is Roth? They're, they're the ones who basically sit on top of the world. Okay. They've got all the money. They stay out of the news. They don't want to be in the news. They'd rather people didn't know they existed. Okay. What's your point? Well... They didn't, they didn't, used to be black. Okay. What's wrong with people black being millionaires? How did they... doesn't make it a different story. Well, yeah, but you just agreed they would have started out with quite a bit of money. Yeah. So how? Family. Yeah? Yeah. So they mixed then, the Rothschilds are mixed with the blacks, that's what I'm saying. Adoption. Well, they just no, one they of them married a black the person. Sort of fucking billionaires. Fucking Morgan Freeman. Look how minted he is. Okay, but less than two hundred years ago. Well, Kanye wasn't born two hundred years ago. Was there he? was hardly a single free well, black person. Shit. No, was yeah, I mean maybe they, maybe like royalty. I mean, yeah, I guess. Have you seen the African? Yeah, I guess it could be for They're African royalty. Limited, it could be from that. Have mm. you seen the shit they wear and shit? Have you seen the Nigerian mansions? They're fucking mad. Yeah, well, that's new wealth. That's new. That's yeah, that's I'm that's corruption and oil money. That is. Well, you don't know what money it is. Yeah, I do. Are you a Nigerian prince? No, right. Exactly. They, 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 they don't have a monarchy. Uh, yeah, they okay. don't have a monarchy. Uh, they're gangsters. No, they're not. <laughs> I bet they are. You're just saying that. Because but I have been to Africa. I do know what they're like. And I know that they're more racist than we are because you, That's true. you ask them if they like the local Luo tribe and no, they'd like to see them dead and they'd never intermarry and... They hate them more than anyone else. So, is that with are they white? No, they're just different tribes. That doesn't mean they're racist because different tribes aren't racist. If you hate you, if you hate them, you want to cut their head off and you'd never yeah, ever marry them. It, it's about race. No, it's not. It's about it's their. The same, it's the same race as them. It's different tribes. Different tribe, different tribes. DNA. Yeah, they, they stick to their own. Hang on, so That's racist. Let's say I'm white. I hate a white guy. That makes me racist. Doesn't make any fucking sense, does it? No, but it's not just about skin colour. It's about... Yeah, different DNA, you say. Race. Yeah, it's different right. DNA from that fucking... That's, that's it. So if you didn't like... So that's racism. All right, but if you didn't like people with black hair and fat noses, because even just because yeah, they were white... No, that doesn't just make the different DNA. The, the guy next door has fucking different DNA. I hate him. Alright, what about if you said you hate Scottish people? And you went, oh, I fucking hate the Scottish and the ginger air. That's not racism because it's not a race. It is. Scotland isn't a race. Pretty much. <laughs> no Alright, but if you hate chinks, if you said I hate chinks. Yeah. Right. That's racist. If you said it's I, Asians, isn't it? I hate Aborigines. Yeah, that's racist. Right. That's a race. So, a, a, say a, because it's a race. Right. So, say a Kikuyu tribe in it's Africa Kikuyu, says they hate the Aborigines. Yeah. That's racist. No, no, because the skin color is the same. <laughs> that's bollocks. It's not. You can't just say racism no, no, isn't sorry, just not about skin colour. colour. Ethnicity. Ethnicity. I used the wrong term. I mean, the, the thing is in England is that we're quite mixed. We're mixed up, but you go to some okay, place. Just uh, my point then. You know, well, go on, say it again then. Ethnicity. Ethnicity is just another word for race. Yeah. Still the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying is. Listen, all the different tribes, they are the same ethnicity. Yeah. If it's another word for race... They've all got different no. ethnicities. 
Are you fucking stupid? I said they're the same and you went, yeah. No, yeah, so, yeah, then I realised what you meant. They're, so they're not. The different tribes are different. No, they're not. They are. Right, Google the meaning of this. No, I'm not Googling anything now. Okay. There's more the variation Does in it DNA. Doesn't it mean the same as race? Doesn't it mean the same as race? Ethnicity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you're going against someone's race, don't fucking blabber on again. Just keep it short. And I don't simple. want my fucking keep video to be about this. About this simple. bullshit. Keep it short and simple, yeah? What? Give me an example of being against someone's race. Without you being racist, it's an example. Well, people just... You mean like when people just hate people because of the colour of their skin? Yeah. But it's not just that though, is it? They got no, because of their ethnicity. The, the, but they point things out like they got fat lips, they got big flat noses. No, they not got everyone. Some people just go. No, exactly not everyone. But there'll be jokes. There'll be jokes about the size of a black man's lips. Yeah. Right. There will be jokes. And it's and it's directed towards all black people, even though it's not true. Most of these things never are true. You know, we take the piss out of the Irish and say they're stupid. Even though they're probably not all stupid. No, only Paddy's are stupid. But this is the thing. This is but how... Not a race this is... Not yeah, but this is what it's all about. It's about generalising about a certain group of people, whether they're gay, black or whatever, and typecasting them. And everybody types cast everyone. I'll be typecast as crusty hippie. Or, you know, yeah, but white middle-aged man. That's a good point, but my point isn't that. My point is that you're using the wrong word for it. You're saying things are racist. Were well, you just arguing the toss? No, you're saying things are racist when they're not. Like, when someone hates another tribe, that isn't racist, because they're the same race. And that's no, but they're not. It's as simple as that. No, you are being racist. It's saying they're the same tribe. I didn't say they were the no, same tribe. No, saying they're the same ethnicity. I'm saying you're the same being race. the <laughs> all race. Yeah. Because the Lu the no, Luos the Luos and the Kikuyus look different. The yeah. Kikuyus. Me and you look yeah, different. Yeah, but generally you can look at Kikuyus and you can look at Luos and you can say that's a Kikuyu, that's a Luo. Okay. It's apparent. You can look at me and you and go, that's a hippie. And that's a no, but this is about that's about hairstyle. No, it's not. This is, no, this is generalizing their facial features, their height, their yeah, we their have limbs. Different facial features. Every person has fucking different facial. Yeah, but I'm saying generally. Like right, generally, everyone has different facial no, features. No, you just can't admit you're wrong. You have that problem. Wrong to what? Wrong about anything. <laughs> you can't admit you're wrong about anything. You're getting defensive because you're wrong. I'm getting pissed off. This fucking video is now all about this shit. <laughs> you're just defensive because you're wrong. I want you to fuck off. Because <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah. And who's right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Say sorry, I'm a little bitch. Sorry, I'm a little bitch. <laughs> Light. Oh, no, I know. I had it on. Leave it on. Sorry. work out for me. <coughs> and this is going to be the struggle. This is going to be the struggle for the next 60 years. Right, before I was so rudely interrupted, this is where I was. I was saying, oh shit, it's gone again. Fuck. Why did I, why did I f try and fill in words? Why did I try and introduce it? Why didn't I just say it? By crying out loud, where was I? See, I can't remember, I can't remember. You probably can't either. It will come back.
Ah yes. So it was good. I was happy finding out all these revelations in reordering it. But what was the, the, the truth, the bitter truth, if you like, was that whereabouts we are. Not just that. Well, yeah, Sardis. Church of Sardis. Fifth trumpet is what we got coming up. 2033. Few. Very few. Will be walking on the righteous path. So in a sense I was hoping, always hoping, that um, you know, all this spirituality and everything would be a resurgence of the right things. And I suppose it kind of got me frustrated seeing how kind of slow it was happening, but it was happening. It did, does seem to be happening that people are coming out with it and so in a sense maybe I could say to myself oh it's not true what I reveal what I've been what has been revealed to me in reordering the revelations as the way I have done um, but that would be ignoring um, what's kind of staring me in the face and then I wouldn't be being true to myself. So that's that bitter, bitter pill of truth to take on. And there's going to be few. It is. But it's much more realistic, you know, that what I was thinking before is that what, you know, any day now or any year, this year or next year, God's going to do something spectacular and there's going to be a sudden change in the world and we're all going to be lovely, hairy, fairy, happy, dappy, you know. So that is unrealistic, you know. For when the good time comes, you know, all of this, what we call civilization, which is something we want to talk about, is going to be broken down going to be gone. Civilization. It's sold to us as we're civilized. We get on with one another. We don't fuss and fight. But we also ignore other people. We also mind our own business. And so we don't integrate with the other people. So it's a trick. Because, of course, the person at the top, or people at the top, the one who are sitting there at the top saying these are the rules of the game, of course they want us all to get on. Of course they want us to get on, do our work, serve them, and all be getting on with it, and quash our feelings of resentment and anger and quash all that and quash all this, of course they want that. And ignore people so that if anyone is up to something maleficent, you know, they can just get on with it and walk about in plain sight and no one's going to interfere or be nosy or, you know? Civilization. That's civilization. So the question should be, whose civilization? And um, I've been quite addicted to a game called Civilization. I started out with number two, and the graphics were pretty basic, and uh, but it was quite addictive game. And I played number three, and I played number four, and I played number five, and I went back to number four. And, you know, I've put it down sometimes for a year or whatever. Uninstalled it from a computer, forgotten about it. But um, <laughs> I've been playing it lately and the last year I've played it more, more than I had before. I think I'd put it down for a good few years before that. Um, but I like it because you can be... God over the realm and you know it's fun and stuff now when I but I've always had these when I'm playing the game I, there's one thing I can't stand and that is to cut down all the trees and eventually it 
you know, you would suffer. I mean, you could kind of get by, but your cities and stuff would, would struggle with health later on in the game if you cut down too much of your forests. But also, I hate the look. So if I'm going and taking over someone else's land and they've cut all their trees, I just hate it. And I usually play until you get to, like, where you can have machine guns. And at that point, for some reason, I just... Uh, so it becomes really boring. But when you've got swordsmen and stuff like that, it's it's such a fun game to play in a way. Like, but like when I started out, I never had the um, the c civics of of slavery. I don't. I'd never just. I'd never enabled that. I don't want slavery. You know, slavery is bad. Never had slavery. And then just in this last stint of playing, I um. I did, and and I realised. Oh, hang on a minute! Right, you can um, you can finish say making an army or, or or a building or something if you need it in a rush. If you need it right now, you can finish it quick by sacrificing some of your population, and there'll be the penalty will be that they'll they'll be pissed off at you. Or there'll be a certain section of your society will be unhappy for a certain period of time, and and during that time it, you you look on the reasons why your city's un, unhappy, and 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 it says we cannot forget your cruel oppression. But it lasts for ten turns, and then it goes away. So sometimes it's actually a benefit, and I was. I was I was having cities that could grow really fast, um, so I could you know I could I could I could allow it to grow, not worry because before when I'm playing, I worry so much. Oh no, they're getting overcrowded and oh, causing me loads of problems. With, with this slavery, so you kill two birds with one stone. You you know this isn't the game. I realise this isn't relevant to real life. This specific point, but you know you lower the population and. You get your thing built, okay, they're, they're pissed off, but they were pissed off about being overcrowded, so, and this pissed offness doesn't last that long. You know, and it, but that's the bit which is true to life. The way they can, they'll do things to this that piss us off, they know they can piss us off that much and it will last this long, and afterwards we'll forget and we can move on. But like when I'm playing the game, you know, I need that thing built this civilization might rest upon us getting that thing finished and built so that we can defend our our land or whatever that is so from the point of view of the emperor you know these things are necessary or might, could be necessary for survival but that just really sums up the whole ridiculousness of having all these different nations and you know we're sort of we seem to be moving or well, we have been moving towards a global world and we are in a sense now a global world with a few exceptions funnily enough quite a lot of those exceptions never signed up to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF bank that most countries are heavily indebted to, which is owned by Rothschild. Um, yeah, they're the outcasts. They're, they're not treated nicely. And check out Anna Breeze, B R E E S, A N N A B R E E S. She's a journalist who's who knows firsthand about the how uh, we haven't been getting the truth about the paedophilia and stuff and the cover-ups and you know how the twisted media are putting things across anyway sorry that was a jump <laughs> a massive argument on this <laughs> video now great See, love in action
See, the other thing that with this game that I realised is I um one of the things that did annoy me about playing it before was all the diplomacy bullshit. P P P's treating trade, you know, you trade with them and and then um but then they dislike you because you've chosen a certain civics or a certain religion and and you see you sort of monitor how, how much they the things they like about you and the things they don't like about you and then and they won't let you walk through their lands anymore so if you wanted to you'd have to declare war on them so in the end I, so I just played a game and this the latest thing that's made it interesting for me was just have on always war so except I'm the only one like they're all trading with each other but I'm the only one who's always war and Interestingly enough, I've been doing better than I have ever before on the in the game with always war, which is odd, but at least you're prepared for it. you know there's no dilemma, you know they're going to attack you whereas before they might they might not and it was all this like not knowing and so you can, and you can usually, you can benefit usually from defending. So you can, you know they're going to attack you, or the ones that just like attacking will, just, they'll pick on you because they'd like to go to war with someone, but they've got peace treaties with other people, so you're the one who's always at war. Anyway, it made me realise that even if, even if, so... Basically, diploma basically all nations are always at war with every other nation. It's just the diplomacy is the veil of it. So they all like, would admit behind the scenes, yeah, we're at fucking war. You know, but we do everything we can apart from what would uh, cause war, if you like. So any little tricks we can do, we'll do, and we'll know, we know that they're doing it, and... You know, they just obviously it just creates a whole sort of thing of mistrust, and you know I think these things. So the, the diplomacy aspect, the bullshit, the cutting down of the trees, and the modernization, and the becoming more boring. These are the things that I hate. I hate, and the things I love is nature. And people just being people and God love right okay let's let's get into the thick of it let's get into the thick of it so with the advent of printing We've moved into a new phase, it's 1300 something. People are fighting with bows and arrows. And Merlin has been, and people are still talking about him. But we're moving into a new phase. Well, it says in the introduction to Revelations, the, about the Lamb. The Lamb was, and then was dead, but is now again. Now, it's not about Yeshua, because Yeshua has already been mentioned as the faithful witness. That's right at the beginning of Revelations. Also, John weeps because there's no one there who can open the seals. So, plus, Yeshua only died for three days. 
you know, so... Also, Revelations is a vision. Now, do you get historical recaps in visions? No. If you're there having a vision, you already know what's happened in the history. It's not like a TV drama. <laughs> you're having a vision. Previously, in your life, this already happened, you know this. But we put this in the vision because, uh, you know... So that the other people know what's going on. It's not, it's not that. The vision is about the future, it's about what's going to happen. And he's having this in, you know, what, I don't know, 30 AD or 50 AD or 60 AD, something like that. <coughs> and he's being given a vision. He has not got a choice what it's about, he's just told, like, you got a vision, now write it down. Which he did. I believe that. That's I do believe. I never believed it before. I as soon as I you know I didn't really understand it. And but God, there's so many lines in Revelations that just grab you. you know, there's just things about it. It seems to have encaptured many many people's interest. Let's face it. Yeah, it's so confusing, or it has been. But so, and when I read about it, I was, you know, I just thought, oh, there's too much in here that sounds like the stuff that Daniel wrote about, Daniel's vision. And I think it's wrong to link the two, which you see a lot of people do. They go, right, so the whole Bible's right, so basically Daniel's saying this, he's talking about a beast with four heads, and he's talking about a beast with four heads, it must be the same beast, right? It's possible that it is. It's possible that Daniel does mention a beast with seven heads and seven horns. I can't actually remember. Um, you know, and it could be. It doesn't mean the whole thing is the same. You know, Daniel is an Old Testament. He could have been prophesying about something else. Uh, anyway, Revelations is is interesting. And yes, so now I do believe it. And um, yes... So, so, so the lamb that was and was dead, and it, this says in my copy. And if you want, I, I did a video a little while back just reading the whole thing out in the order that I've put it. So I'm not just, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, f f fed up and faffing about with the flipping. Video editing, okay? Doesn't matter. If anyone's got the patience to watch my stuff, you can learn a lot. Or you can get things confirmed that you've also discovered yourself. Because this is how it will work. People will, can discover the truth from within. It's their truth, it fits with them, it fits with their life, but it also it will fit in when it's truth, because there is an actual truth. So we will all eventually come to the same truths. <coughs> and this is how I do mine. With arguments. I was probably umming and iron about making the video so much precisely because my son's here, and I guess over the years I've been used to having so much time on my own and making a video and shit. So I suppose I still feel a bit weird just talking to a camera when someone else is here and I, and I warned him, I said, look, I'm, I'm maybe making a video, I'm not sure. So anyway, but he's like, I've got to remind him sometimes just, you know, he needs to Get himself a drink. I'll just sit there. I suppose it's tempting if he thinks, oh, I'll just sit here and call out and I'll probably get one. <laughs> anyway, I'm waffling. So, the only. So, the lamb can't be God as well. That's, I mean, that's it. The lamb cannot be God. Even though the lamb does say, so you've got God saying, 
I am the Alpha and the Omega. And then in the next line, the Lamb says, I am the first and the last. And a little bit later on, God also says, I am the first and the last. Or, or the beginning and the end, I think. So th there's a bit of that going on. Which, you, you know, you're thinking, is the Lamb God? Or, you know, why, what's that comment, the first and the last? And, uh, past. Um... But, so, the Lamb can't be God because it says I was and then I was dead and now I am again. God was never dead. Unless it's talking about, I don't know, the Lamb is somehow the the link with God. But then I just, I don't think, I don't think it would be so weird because it says about the Lamb, say so the Lamb is the one that, no, it's not the one, no. Why is it? Why do we think the lamb will be the rider on the white horse? Anyway, that's right at the end. I don't want to go right to the end at the moment. <coughs> <coughs> so, the only one I can think would fit that, would fit in, would fit this in, would fit things together with what's what, is Enoch. But then if you say Enoch, you could also say Elijah. Then we don't really know what happened to either of them. But with Enoch, we know he was taken up by God. After he had lived his life, he didn't die, he was taken up. But it did say that, I, I think this is the books of Enoch, that nobody knew where he was. There was speculation, but nobody could find him. So, you know, the fact that, that that's just in there. And... You know, so I've said it before, I did a video back in 2015, I I got this, I say, if I say it like this, I got this feeling I was Enoch, it sounds really crap, doesn't it? But then if you didn't, if you weren't there when I got the feeling, if, you know, I was going to say I can remember the date then, I think it was March 31st, 2015. But now I'm not 100% sure on the actual date. I think it was 34. Anyway. I certainly remember the encounter. And it was a feeling. I've probably said this. Anyway. So I got this feeling that there'd been a long gap. Or at least I went a long way back. And why did I think? I was just... Because the feeling was... The feeling was coming, I wanted to run away from it. I was almost one of those that I could have run away from. Okay, no, I'm not going to run away from it. I'm going to allow it. And when, if you like, I said the words in my head, or the words just came into my head, if you like, not like a voice, but just like an understanding, I was Enoch. And then the feeling is just... Now, obviously, I've had four years to reflect on this. And I've also, I've had a little memory as well. May not have been when I was Enoch. It could have been before. I wouldn't have thought afterwards. Because I was quite hairy and drawing something in the dirt. And I had that little vision now as I was doing a live video for YouTube. So that's on my old channel. Faithful Philosopher. Um, if you watch my introductory video, I'll, you, there's a link in that on that. So, I've had plenty of time to reflect on this. And the main thing I've got with it is, you know, who said he was Enoch, you know? Is this definitely true? You know, well, there's stuff about Adam and Eve and then you know, all the lineage, and, and people say, well, in those words you can read into, uh, it says something, you know, like Enoch means teacher or something, and each of those names of the line of Seth that is mentioned in the Bible then says something, so, you know, that's kind of one of my biggest, but Enoch the scribe, you see, so it has something about the, you know, writing, 
putting down a word onto into a symbol so it can be written and so that there that vision that I went back to my I'm just I see the others go off I'm in this little hut thing and detect a sense of a dome or something over there with and some people I'm not too sure about because I seem to be looking over in that direction with a sort of a scowl and the guys are walking off and they seem to look like clubs in their hands something like that like you know this is what the daily thing is to go off and batter something to death to eat or something and um for some reason I don't know I didn't want to go and I was just sitting there and I'm stuck with my finger in the dirt just making a line and you know whether that was if that fits in with if Enoch was the first scribe or something like that you know and, and I also have this sense of when because Enoch went with God and asked every question he could possibly ask and got answers to everything and that's been my life but I think then you know either I couldn't hack it or I just I couldn't I just I have this I say had because I have I have felt the feeling now so it's not with me anymore so much but the feeling was, you know, how it, how it, how it just couldn't manage, you know, like either God wouldn't be able to manage, or I couldn't handle that. Reality could could be good, or something like that, you know, this sort of, or maybe you don't know. But anyway, that just seemed to fit, and so. So at the time I thought, all right, I've had this gap and now I've come back into this life. But I don't think, so I'm thinking now, because I do feel like I have had a previous life, like recently. So I'm starting to think that I came back in around 1350-ish time. But I don't know, maybe I haven't. Maybe I came back later. Maybe I was just doing something else. And look, believe me, I when I think this, sometimes I think, come on. You just... Illusions of grandeur, as Dara so rightly put. It is easy to get into illusions of grandeur. But... There's also sometimes, or there may be, there must be, because there has been, you know, sometimes when you've got to step up to the plate and swing at the ball. <laughs> step up to the plate. And fucking, if you, do you know what I mean? If God came and pointed to you and said, right, you, I want you to do this. Yeah, I had my whole thing of yeah, accepting that feeling on the third time of asking, if you like, embracing it. Oh, shit, right, I'm the Christ then. Oh, shit, right, better take this seriously. Yeah. Okay, what am I going to do then? Well, I'm Christ, okay. Well, I'm not going to bloody die on a cross because I've already decided in my life that if I ever... If I was, I wouldn't bloody do that, because, like, he did it, and what good did it go do? So, you know, I already had that in me anyway. But I remember sort of thinking, oh, yeah, I bet there's going to be this time next year, this will all come out when I go public with it. I'll probably be in danger of my life. And, and then try and think, you know, okay, so I'm this, all right, what am I supposed to do with it? I must be supposed to do something with it. And um, you know, I thought about doing lots of things, writing letters, going to 
uh, Speaker's Corner and da -da 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 -da. In the end, what I decided to do was to meditate the shit out of it. And if there was something that I was supposed to be doing with f feeling this feelings and I was I was trying my best, I was doing my best. If I was getting a situation, I was meditating over 10 hours a day, every day, and I would get burning feet during it's like I thought they might set on fire. At one point I've had felt such intense pain in my toe or in my heel to the, just to the point of like do you know what I mean? Like what 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 am I doing? And but there were times when there were just the most amazing feelings going through me. And I was learning. And I learnt that any pain is a result of you resisting a feeling and usually it's a deeper feeling so now you know I feel a feeling coming on and if I don't resist it and I feel it with love and my whole perception changes I'm not just in this it's not just the 3D anymore it's the full 11D world going on and have I done any good for the world? Well. Best case scenario, I've done some good for the world. Worst case scenario, I've done some good for myself. And um, so either way, I really don't mind. Um, I'm quite happy just just living it, right? Um, but yeah, I'm prepared to stand there on the plate and do my bit, whatever that is. And... Um, if I'm, if I've got, yeah, just got to do my bit. And I, I, and because of this revelations thing, I've pretty much, yeah, I'm going to have a role to play, I do feel, in this life, yet, still. And the, probably the main role I do see will be, will be, you know, soon starting soon, if this is the beginnings of it, I don't know. Um, and, but going through the next 10, 15 years would be, yeah. But then it'd be my next life. My next life will be the more um, prominent one. So... What do I know? I mean, that's the future. We don't know the future. But that's how I'm understanding things. Um, yeah, and uh, please forgive me that I'm uh, talking about me a lot lately, but if I'm concerned or interested in previous lives and things like that, then surely my own life my own previous lives is where I need to work because how could I possibly know somebody else's you know sort of start thinking about who other people are before I would think about who I was so it's just pretty obvious got to talk about myself I'll tell you one thing I I do not, I struggle with compliments. If I'm in a situation where I'm getting complimented, and if it's, especially if it's about something I care about, like some people call me a genius for fixing their computer, I don't have a problem with that because I don't particularly care and I'm just thinking, well, you know, you think I'm a genius because you don't know anything about this, so fine, no, you can call me a genius, it doesn't really mean much. But if someone was, you know, to start complimenting me on my philosophy or, you know, my stuff I'm talking about, <laughs> and saying, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. You know, I, or I get a positive YouTube comment or whatever. I actually, I actually struggle with that a lot more than um, the negative ones. Negativity, my dad trained me well for that. I'm just 
water off the duck's back. Well, I think I've I think I've talked about most things I want to talk about. I mean, I could go right through Revelations. I'm not sure my memory of it all is that good. I mean, one of the there's some of the things that have been I've been looking at because some of the most difficult things are the I think the two witnesses is probably the most difficult thing to I mean, some of it, it, it seems contradictory, uh, some of it is really weird. And the, um, and the two beasts, that's another one, and the, the dragon chasing the woman. And I've been doing some work on the, on, the, on the sign of the woman, Revelation 12. I've been going through the star, going through the years on Stellarium, looking at... Um, this sign of the woman uh, robed with the sun. Now the 2017 one is pretty good. The I think the planets are the three planets that make the, so because it says you're on a crown, a crown on a head with twelve stars. You got Leo is where you know Leo is above her head. There's nine stars in Leo, so you want three more, three planets. So you want them there, don't you? You don't want them lower down by her arms and stuff. But it says road with the sun, and the one in 2017, is, the sun is very much like round the top of her head. Um, which I wouldn't necessarily say robed, you know. I would have thought the sun needs to be around the body area. And... It, also, also the like the moon, it says the moon at her feet, and um, so that needs to be there. But also, it refers a bit later on that she's pregnant. Now, I knew there was a sign before that had one of the planets was sort of coming down her legs as as the days went by or something, and I think that was two thousand fifteen. Because I, I thought it had been 2012, but I looked, 2012. Because every year you'll get, the sun will be in the middle of whatever her name is, Virgo. So you get, you get one chance a year, there's the sun. Every 30 days the moon's going to be coming round. So once that moon's just come round and it's at the bottom of the feet, are there three stars in Libra, uh, Leo? And which three stars? I think that's important as well because, and it also says about the dragon, is there waiting for the child to be born? So I kind of felt that you needed all those things, and then which planet is there waiting? Would be you know I think it would either have to be Saturn, or or Mars, and I think really it has to be Saturn, Saturn named after Satan. Surely. And it would be nice, I think, if it was Jupiter being born, like the king. But I don't think there's any of them have got that. Anyway, I went right back to sort of early 1800s. And there's some quite good ones in 1860, which was when I wanted it to be. But when I looked at them, I thought, no, they're not. They're not as good as 2017, and even 2017 isn't that good. But I think the best one, there's some good ones in 1980, 1979. And the other thing I'm thinking about with the Revelations is it's, it's true more than once. It's, I'm, I'm positive, oh, well, I'm not positive, this part, this part of the confusion. Is it might even be true for three things. So it might be true for the the main thing, the thirteen fifty end times, thirteen fifty to two thousand one hundred and twenty eight, God's plan, end period, right? That's the big story. It's also like with the church is a little personal story of your own personal things as you go through the stages of awakening. <coughs> 
<coughs> but whether there are other sort of like a like it could almost describe a little shorter time period, like a little 50 year period or something. I don't know. Or maybe these things happen more than once. Anyway, so yeah, so there's some in 1980, 1979, they were quite good. But 18, 1889, this is when, so I think, and, there, and also is looking for comets, because it says then there's another sign in heaven, and a dragon's tail drew a third of the stars down or whatever. And, um... There was some pretty big comets, obviously, and that's the thing, that's the other thing, is there's always a bloody comet. You know, so maybe this is talking about a sign when, you know, maybe, maybe it's talking about different antichrists that come down. I just thought of that. Rubbish, isn't it, when I'm doing a video and I just think of stuff. <laughs> it's annoying. So, so yeah. But 1888 is supposed to be a good 888, eight, eight, eight. but anyway, 1888, 1889, and that's actually in a in an upper way, because 1881 is on a down, so 1888, 1889, and I have noticed this as well, that, so with the thing with the waves, right, so you can be down at your depths, right, you're feeling like shit, okay, you get through it, out of the woods, coming up, Sometimes when you're on top, sometimes that's when you get your given your challenge, you know. So sometimes it's when you're on top of the world that's when you're given a a challenge to deal with. So I think that point where they're saying Revelations at the hour has come. The devil and his angels have been fighting Michael and his angels in heaven. The devil couldn't. Uh, keep a, a foothold in heaven and was cast down to earth. I feel on the big picture of things that was 1888. And that's when you had Jack the Ripper as well. And I've really been drawn to this whole thing about the Russian um, the Russian royal family and you know, the Russians they never they never went out and conquered other lands you know they have you seen the size of their palaces I mean I think you know we we don't appreciate enough and Eastern Europe that then these areas of, uh, of kind of I guess they the, they were the sort of top place in the old days but yeah Russia I'm very much drawn to this whole thing and then you know the revolution and the killing of the all the royal family and did any survive and and this thing about the dragon chasing the woman and I'm not sure if it's a a person or a city anyway so I am continuing to go through things and check it but knackering me out a bit to be honest I've got to take my time with it, I think. Um, and it's just a bit annoying to try and to try and get everything, like, to make a, a video so that you can see it. And it's a ball ache, basically. I don't think I'm going to bother with that. I mean, if people are interested, you, you've got, you can look at it yourself, can't you? But I, I will, I will just, I will, you know continue just to gather a bit more evidence and I'll, I will do something with it eventually. Eventually. Um, I'd be also very welcome if anyone's still here <laughs> to hear if anyone's got anything two cents worth collaboration on this. I'm quite happy to collaborate. You know might not be the easiest person to collaborate with but um, I'm not very tactful you see I'm just blunt I'm <coughs> blunt it out right right
might as well. Why not? Something I worked out. If you have a, if you sit on the floor meditating, you starting out, maybe not used to a hard floor, even with a mat, find it a bit hard, you know. But if you go too soft, that's when you get dead limbs. That's when you'll lose um, feeling in your leg. Too much cushioning. Not enough cushioning. I actually think this folded over is too much. Prefer, but not enough, and um, just hurts your bones. I guess eventually you'll get hardened to it. But I've been doing it for quite a few years, and I think it'll take take <laughs> probably take a lifetime. Should have started when I was younger. Now I'm just going to play the first song I thought of in my head, which I don't always play that well, so... Let yourself go Let yourself go
takes my soulmate tonight. They saw him empty anymore. So no possible.